Okay, guys, so shockingly, your number one fat hand mouse reviewer that's not from Germany is back. Shout out to Levi on Twitter. Drop me the follow, man. You stalk me enough. Might as well get the scoop as soon as possible, you know. I'm going to get back into making videos. I'm not going to be making reviews necessarily. I think reviews are fucking memes. But if I have a mouse that I think has something notable to say about it or something unique that's worth making a video on it, I will. I have enough mice to make it worth it. So I'm going to start doing it again. Today we're going to be talking about HSK Plus from Jewels. This was actually gifted to me from by Gary. Good enough to reviews. So I'll link him in the description. Shout out to him. This is the mouse that was in his early video. So this is an early prototype. So there might be some differences between this and what you would end up getting if you bought one. Especially you knowing Jewels who change random things for no reason every batch seemingly. So the reason why I wanted to make this video today is to talk about the build quality of this mouse in the history. G-Walls had really bad build quality. It would feel okay to start off with and then after a month of use, everything would degrade, the sides would creak, the clicks would feel like shit. And with this mouse, they've had a massive upgrade. This honestly feels like it's made by Vaxi or Logitech. That's how good the improvements have been to the shell design. It's absolutely solid. There's no creak, there's no wobble, there's no click issues like you've had with previous G-Walls mice. This mouse is awesome. You can even just pop it open to show you that I don't even use it with the screws and that's how good it is. Nice little PCB there. This is different to the production model PCB but it doesn't do any performance differences. So yeah, massive shout out to Jewels for massively upgrading their build quality. I guess the side effect of that is you can only buy like six mice at a time but hopefully they can get that right also. Then we can get into the shape of this. If you want all the sort of X by X millimeters, you can go look at Gary's review. I'm sure he covered it all. That's not what I'm about. I'm going to talk about one thing. It's the hump. Why does a fingertip mouse have a hump? The only person who I know uses it like this is a recluse, and I'm 99% sure that's a fucking meme anyway. But I've told Jim that I think it should be changed. He seemed to have a similar idea, so hopefully with HSKs going forward, the hump will be changed. Now the clicks on this unit are really, really nice. Gary changes them to Japanese on bronze, so they're very clicky, very poppy. It feels very similar to the M2K, which is awesome. What you're gonna have in terms of the stock feel, I can't comment on. So one of the most baffling decisions about this mouse is they changed the skate shapes very slightly from the wired HSK. Uh, bear in mind you're a small brand, this is already a niche product, why would you make it harder for someone to buy aftermarket skates? Corpad already had the wide version, and I don't think Corpad will even know that this is different. How would they even find out? There's like four HSK Pluses in the whole world at the moment seemingly, so I think you should try to keep to the same skate design in the future. I've got a few words on my monitor to give four processes to keep me from rambling too much. One of them is price, which is followed by three question marks because I don't know how much this mouse costs. Every single place it's been, it's been a wildly different price. On X-ray pad right now, you can get the white one for $109.99, the transparent blue one for $19.99. But depending on where you live, you could be paying up to like $50, $70 just to get it shipped. And some places have free shipping. So to buy this mouse right now, it seems a bit of a pain in the ass depending on where you live. I think if you do use fingertip, this is something that you should be trying. I think maybe this mouse is $100 worth max. I wouldn't be playing 170, which some people did on the first drop to get it imported into the EU. Now the question is, should you try this mouse? I think if you use a fingertip grip, it's kind of a no-brainer that you should try it. But getting one seems to be a bit of a pain in the ass, so maybe give it a while until you will get their stuff sorted out. And I know they're making their own website where they'll sell from. Hopefully the shipping costs and shipping times won't be too bad so everyone can get their products. You know, being an F-tip user, the amount of range of motion you can get with this mouse is crazy. You can get a lot more vertical manipulation than you could with something like a Starlight, for example, which is a comparative weight, which is, I guess is one thing is I would like to talk about as well. This mouse is kind of heavy for what it is. Mine is 38 grams with a 70 milliamp hour battery that I believe Gary put in there. I don't know if it came like that as a prototype, but I feel like that's kind of heavy when most of the stock ones up i believe are closer to 40 grams and as a result of this being around 40 grams the retail copy you take something like the starlight which is you know 42 33 44 it is a fair bit bigger longer than that it, this ends up feeling lighter than this because it's something more compact it's like an illusion but i think with some of jim's special magic they could definitely get the weight down there could be cutouts in the bottom Reducing the hump would definitely take some of the weight out. 
So another thing we can talk about is the side buttons and the scroll wheel. The side buttons, I can personally use them fine with no issue, but a lot of people complain about the positioning, the front one, they can't really reach it. So there's been a lot of mock-ups in the Achievables Discord about where they should be positioned here and here, moved back to here and here, which I think would work for more people. I also think it gets a bit awkward with the hump if they reduce it and then straighten the side buttons out further back, that would be fine. But Jim seems very receptive to these ideas. Shout out to Jim and G-Wolves in general. They have been taking a lot of the feedback from the Discord and trying to implement it into their products. That's good. And then onto the scroll wheel. When I first saw pictures of this massive foot scroll wheel, it was way too low. Like it wasn't even mounted properly, but in actual use, I don't have any complaints by it. It's nice and coder, TCC gold. Some people would probably like it to be a bit higher, but I think it's very natural to roll your finger onto there without having to lift it too much. So ending this off, I'd say a big shout out to G-Wolves, massive leap forward in terms of the build quality. All your previous mice had basically one month shelf life until they felt like shit. So this is a great indication of what's to come in the future with HiS Plus, HiX, HSK Pro, blah, blah, blah. I'm very excited to see that stuff. I know there was some Twitter stuff about the clicks having issues. I think they fixed that with the Omrom 60 mils. They got rid of the KL 8.0s, thank God. No one likes those switches anymore. And overall, I think it's a, a great little mouse. Some improvements could be made, but you should definitely give it a consideration if you're having a computer. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll definitely be more consistent with videos. Peace.